Thank you for watching our Chemical TV's interview series. My favorite program used to be The Muppet Show. Also on our cartoon it's time to play the music. In this case the specially orchestrated Purple Dream. Like some of the Muppets musical performances, not completely harmonized yet. Kermit the Frog might sing it's not easy being green, but it's also not easy playing the Purple Dream, let alone implementing that. Since in many areas of the world there is a different implementation of the global harmonized system, GHS. Today we have invited two composers and we'll talk about their experiences with GHS and like to learn from them on the future of the harmonization of GHS. From Austria, Christian Gründlich, Technical Director, Chemicals Policy at the Association of the Austrian Chemical Industry. And from Canada, Francis Trudeau, Solution Manager at Sfera Solutions. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank welcome. you. Yeah. First question, always the same. What did you do in 1996? In 1996, um, I was finishing my master's degree in chemistry at l'Université de Montréal. And you, Christian? Well, for me, um, 1996, I did the military service in Austria after having finished my PhD. To what extent has GHS been adopted by countries today? We're, I wouldn't say we're completely done with it, but it's been adopted with the, all of the major economies and the most complicated ones in a way because it's all the countries that used to have legislation in place. There's a part of uh, that is difficult with GHS now still is the fact that in, in countries like in Canada and US, for example, you have consumer good re regulation, CCCR in Canada, CPSC in the US. These still use their own labeling scheme, the old ones. So uh, I guess there an, an opportunity is for, these, for GHS to trickle down to secondary legislation. Christian, do you see uh, opportunities for secondary legislation as well in Europe? Uh, the problem we are facing in Europe is a little bit more the direct link between the classification according to GHS and the downstream legislation, which really makes it very difficult to predict what's going to happen. I mean, the only thing we can do is, uh, and from industry perspective, this, this would be rather useful, uh, break the link between the direct hazard consequence and go to a more risk-based approach. That would be our wish, mm -hmm. which is done in several other areas in the world. Uh, how far is GHS harmonization feasible across the countries and the areas of application? Well, uh, I mean, uh, Francis was saying there are some, some white spots still, but I think uh, overall the harmonization goal is quite good already. If you decide not to get a full harmonization, you deliberately have to choose not to do it. Like in Europe, deliberately not to implement certain hazard classes. Well, no, we implement it all, but mm -hmm. hazard categories. Yeah, like in transport, just focus on acute uh, hazards and forget about the chronic ones because they are different target audiences. And these differences, I think, will always remain. What is the state of GHS implementation in industry? In industry, GHS is everywhere. Yeah, you know, of course, a lot of industries take a regional perspective. They try to market things in one region and then they have to take the conservative option. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they're not in compliance. Well, if you get problems in that region because of the conservative approach, then you know it anyway. And then you have to look into more details about the exact implementation. Yeah. yeah, but but for me, it's not only bigger industries. I always also see it on smaller companies level that GHS helped them a lot in marketing the product all over the world. What else do you think uh, makes GHS a success? Well, it's uh, it's the Esperanto. You can have a dialogue between industry, between enforcement, between government, between your own customers. Uh, and there is always, even if when there is dispute and dissension on a country-specific implementation, because, well, in Japan, the law is published in Japanese and it's not necessarily back translated into English. And even if it was, maybe some information was lost in translation. So you can always refer to the Purple Book. We have copies of it. And you can have a conversation with anybody uh, that know, know the basics. So this is, this is really a great achievement. Francis, do you have any recommendations for amendments of GHS, short term or long term? I mean, all the GHS is built uh, for mixtures, at least, uh, around classification criteria that will pick on classification from substances. So if at the substance level, 
I mean, we have we have the Japanese and European and Chinese and Taiwan inventories and none of them are quite harmonized. Well, you start from a wrong foot really to create data sheets for mixtures that look alike. So, but what would your recommendation be then? <laughs> to form this, uh, yes, a harmonized list of cl classified substance based on um, you know, peer-reviewed and uh, accepted sources by a committee. And, you know. Do you think that would work, Chris? Well, uh, from the European uh, experience, where we uh, already have a lot of uh, substances with the harmonized classification, mm -hmm. uh, we know that it works to a certain extent. I mean, in Europe, Absolutely. we did that with the classification and labeling inventory. Yeah. The goal there was not to, in one shot goal, have one substance, one classification, but to make visible and very transparent mm -hmm. the differences in classification and the same could be done as a starting point for at least as I see that, for the, uh, well, global list of, of classified chemicals. Okay, now, thank you very much for your interesting insights of GHS today and in the future. Um, will it remain the same or more harmonized or maybe even close harmony? A purple nightmare or a purple dream? That's for the future to show. Mm -hmm.